What is up everyone, Super Tom here and this is the question that I have been asked a lot about and that is who should I go for, Ayaka or Yoimiya? Funny how at the start of Inazuma, Mihoyo decided to drop two beautiful waifu making Genshin simp have a hard time. And I'm not talking about you Wills, this is about F2P and those who still need to consider spending their primo gems wisely to choose either of the character. So on the right side, we have Ayaka, daughter of the Yashiro Commission's Kamisato clan. And on the left, we have Yonia, queen of the summer festivals. Today we will have our two lovely waifus go head to head with each other to help you find out who's the most suitable for you. Disclaimer as always guys, this is a fan service prediction discussion video to help you have a rough idea of the upcoming changes. The information is based on pre-release information so it is subjected to change by Mihoyo. Also, I would not dive deep into their skills and stats of the two characters as for that you can quickly search on Honey Hunter website, I will have the link in the description. With that out of the way, let's hop into the video. Okay, first off, in any of my which character to pull video, I will state this point as the most important question of all and this could just actually be your answer when clicking on this video. And it is that, which character would you enjoy playing more? To this, we have three aspects. Who as the character do you like more? Is it Ayaka or Yoimiya? One is Cryo Supremacy and the other is Pyro Supremacy. Secondly, Ayaka is the sword user and the other is bow user which is a world of difference in playstyle. One is close combat and the other is range. Thirdly, are you going to travel with that character a lot when you go into world adventure? Or are you just going to be using them for some time and then later on leave them at the back of the garage? So before you go any further, consider yourself that which character do you feel you prefer more? Whose playstyle do you prefer? And how often will you use that character? If asking those questions you found your answer, that's great, congratulations, you can click off the video now and patiently wait for your character to arrive on their banner because I respect your time. But if you're still having trouble or you like to look into their DPS potential side of things to know how much they will help you out in your current team, then that's what we'll be diving into right now. I will be diving into their possible pros and cons. The reason why I say possible is because again, this is based on pre-release information so it could change on official arrival. If there are any cons we're seeing right now, hopefully it will be fixed later on. So for Ayaka, her pros. She is a top tier cryo waifu in terms of cuteness. Come on, most of you can't deny that judging from the fact that many has not wasted any of their primo gems just to get her once she comes. <laughs> Secondly, she's a cryo sword DPS that has a super high base attack of 342. That's the same as Eula, which is the second highest base attack character in the game. Now that's not the only place that her stat shines. Looking at her normal attack, talent level 8, she has really good scaling. But I want to draw your attention to her charge attack, which is 94.23% damage times 3. Comparing that to Kuching, who's no Known as the queen of charge spamming, each of the charge attack has a total damage of 278% and it costs 25 stamina. For Ayaka, she has a total of 283% and it only costs her 20 stamina, which is insane. She might just be able to charge spam most of the enemies, killing them super fast. Furthermore, this is also not official as this is the number from beta, but if it's the same, then Ayaka burst could potentially be one of the highest damaging bursts in the game. Her burst slashes 20 times and finally once it ends, it also does another bloom damage. If we're looking at talent level 8, then the cutting damage multiplied by 20, adding the bloom damage together at the end will result in roughly 3863% damage if the full burst hit and that is an insane number. Next is that her sprint is fixed and is now much better than Mona. The starting and ending animation of the sprint is much faster so you can now react to dodging a lot easier. 
Therefore, you basically will have no problem with Sprint comparing to Mona. Also, there's a potential that you can travel forever on water with Ayaka, as when she reappears, she creates ice on water to stand on and regenerate her stamina. If you time it correctly, you may be able to travel for a very long time on water. And that's not the only power that her dash gives. Whenever she dash, her sword is now infused with cryo for 5 seconds. And in other words, how many seconds doesn't really matter because you're basically dashing all the time. So she is now basically a fully cryo user, so much so that we may feel that she's a cryo catalyst. This just gives her an insane amount of team comp possibility, especially perma freeze. Pairing her up with Sing Chiu, for example, and seriously guys, I can be certain that mobs will be frozen almost all the time unless you're fighting world boss that can't be frozen. For that, she's going to be potentially the best shield breaker in the game apart from cryo shield only. These are the, actually the main reason why I can't wait to test her out because I love frozen team Team comp. For her artifact set, it can be farmed early now, which is the blizzard set. So before she arrives, I'm sure most of us would already have finished farming for it. With that set, she can basically forget about crit rate stats because from the set alone, you get a 40% crit rate from fighting frozen enemies. Having her cryo resonant as well and another 15% is there. So 55% almost natural like crit rate. Not to mention you have a crit rate in sub stats as well. So all she needs left is crit damage which is what she gets while leveling up as well thank you miyoyo you're very thoughtful now this goes without saying as well but if you already look at her attack animation then i'm sure you know how good her animation actually looks sword is one of my most favorite weapon in the game because if you look at it sword animation looks a lot more distinct to each user than most of the other weapons and that is for her pros now for her cons there's only a few right now but there's not too much her biggest one is probably that her burst is very easy to miss. If you don't aim it correctly, mobs can just walk out of her burst or the burst wouldn't just hit at all. Because how it is that the whirling icy winds will move forward as the burst continues. So what you may want to do is try to have mobs frozen in place or maybe have Venti group all the mobs together first before casting her burst. Secondly is that her charge attack and her E skills does a high amount of damage however, it does pushes the enemies back. So best case here is having a crowd control support in your team like Kazuha and Venti would definitely help Ayaka out. So that's for Ayaka, now let's look at Yomiya. For her pros, she's a bow user which can kill enemies from a far distance without potentially getting hit. Well, that's a good thing about range weapon user. Looking at her normal attack, talent level 8, she has a very good scaling in that her 3rd to 5th shots all has roughly a 150% damage. From feedback of beta testers, it seems that Yomiya is somewhat similar to Hu Tao, but it's easier to play, which is a very good thing, and here's why. That means Yomiya DPS level is basically Hu Tao's, who is the top 3 highest DPS in Liyue. Her E infuses her weapon to pyro like Hu Tao, but she's easier in that she doesn't have to charge spam cancel or keep her HP under 50%, which are the two factors that Hu Tao deals the most of her damage. So, Yomiya is basically just going to be standing there with Bennett's burst spamming her no more attack and still get max damage. Like Hu Tao as well, she's not just going to be solely a DPS but does have support potential in that for her second talent. While using her burst, party member gets 10% attack bonus for 15 seconds which is a long time. And additionally, how many stacks she has during her E skills will provide an additional 1% attack bonus. Now let me quickly explain her first talent is that when Yomiya is in her E skills, for every shot that hits will increase her pyro damage by 2% and it has 10 stacks. So let's say that you're having 10 stacks for her E skills, once you use her burst, team member will have a base of 10% attack bonus plus that 10 stack attack bonus equal to 20% attack bonus. Therefore, Yomiya's burst is aimed to be used at the end of her skills and then switch to other character while she is in cooldown very similar to Hu Tao as mentioned by beta testers. A charge attack forms three homing arrows that follows the enemies and hit them in AoE which covers a bit of her lack of AoE damage. Furthermore, Yomiya seems to have the best 
BOA attack animation in the game up until now. If you've seen it, it looks absolutely amazing. She even does a somersault during the animation. She also has many good 4 star weapon choices, namely the new craftable bow in Inazuma will fit her super well, or you have Rust that will also fit for her. She can also be very good in Overload team, especially when Overload has just been buffed in patch 1.6. And remember that Overload team is surprisingly annoying to use at times because it kept on exploding, causing mobs to jump up and down and flying everywhere in the field. That's very hard for player to hit, however, since Yoimiya is a bow user, she won't have too much trouble as it's a ranged weapon. And finally, if you're getting Yoimiya, you are almost guaranteed to get Sayu, who is also a new 4 star character that is coming in Inazuma. And now for her cons, Yoimiya is currently having a few. First of all, is that her base attack is 323, which is not that high compared to some of the main DPS that are presented. But I don't think that it'll matter too much as she does have a high scaling for her normal attack. Here's a more important one is that unlike Hutao, Yomiya has a lot of trouble when it comes to AoE damage. She herself can't deal AoE damage. Her charge attack does cover a bit of AoE but while playing her I'm sure that most of you won't bother with her charge attack. So what we can do in this case is just to rely on her support to help her with AoE damage like maybe Albedo or Mona or whatever character that provides AoE E, e skill damage. Thirdly is that her burst has a surprisingly low scaling. At level 8, the initial damage is only 203% and while there are explosions in betweens, it's not that high either and it's only at 195%. But this is only on stats and numbers. We'll really have to wait till she comes out to really test how good her burst can be. So that's some of Ayaka and Yamiya pros and cons we're currently seeing. Again, these are all predictions and assumptions we're making based on the current information, we'll still need to wait when they officially arrive. Next, let's take a quick look at both characters' team potential. For Ayaka, it's almost 100% that you'll be going with Perma Freeze because her kit is built for that. You're mostly likely going to be using Sincho Burst with Ayaka together, and then having Diona as she's a super good battery and she'll provide as well as a healer for the team. Next is another support that can boost her damage which can either be Bennett or Kazuha or Venti. I'd prefer Animo support character as it's less likely to mess up her freeze comp. Other than that, she might be able to run well with Shangling's melt comp but we'll have to do further testing as Ayaka might be a faster character at applying cryo before Shangling burst is able to apply pyro. And then for Yomiya, as I've mentioned above, she'll go well with overload team so having Fischl is very good, Bennett for attack boost and an Animo support character like Kazuha or Venti for elemental attack bonus as well as crowd control. She might work well with Sincho for vaporize, just might as we'll need to again test how many times is she able to vaporize her own attack and not Sincho. So that's the character analysis. I hope that you've got a good grasp of understanding on the two character. Now the time have come for you to ask yourself the question, which character fits better in your team? Now you can take a bit of time to consider that or re-watch the pros and cons section again to help you make a better decision. But here's my personal opinion and you can follow it if you find it helpful. You choose Ayaka when you love Ayaka, which is pretty obvious. You're currently lacking a cryo DPS. You love Perma Freeze team. You like playing sword user and you can put up with a different style of dashing. And then for Yomiya, you pull her when you love Yomiya as the character, you're lacking pyro DPS character namely Hu Tao or you have Hu Tao but you want to have high DPS damage on an easier level. You like playing bow weapon and you want a character that can deal DPS while providing support to the team. And so that's my personal opinion to conclude the video. If you're still having trouble choosing or have any question, leave a comment down below and I'll get to you there. Well guys, that's all for today. I hope that the video was helpful to you. If it did, be sure to subscribe to my channel as I post daily content to bring you the latest guides, news and updates on Genshin Impact with some funny moments as a cherry on top. With that, this is Tom wishing everyone a super day.